remember we are on a big ball of molten rock spinning through space and it is a jungle so Welcome to Free Teacher and we are going to ask the question this morning what was appeasement and was it justified? Okay so appeasement was a policy followed mainly by Britain with France and it was giving Hitler what he wanted in the hope that this would make him stop demanding more and more and more. Of course, if the aim was to prevent war, then it didn't really work, did it? Because 1939, there was World War II. Give peace a chance. Give peace a chance. The failure of appeasement. Um, but it's not just about preventing war necessarily, it depends on the aims. The aims were either stop Germany asking for more or to prepare for war. So, why did Britain choose appeasement? Number one, appeasement was a popular policy. World War One had happened, people had seen the horror of war, and the British people were not up for war in the 1930s, not until later on. They were not up for war. Number two, democratic countries need to listen to their populace, their population. That's the idea anyway. So if Britain didn't want war, the people, then Chamberlain, as a democratic politician, had to listen to his people. The reason people didn't want war, everybody remembered, number three, the horrors of World War I and they didn't want it to happen again. Next point, Britain was not ready for war until 1939. It was rearming, its air defences were not ready. Um, a war in 1938, we would not have been prepared for, so it was about preparation. The next point is that, in five I think, people saw appeasement as fair because what Hitler was asking for was reasonable. Because, and this is the, the crux of the point, the Treaty of Versailles was so utterly unfair to Germany and Hitler that actually what he was asking for was reasonable and then combined with all of the other factors people didn't want war, Britain was not prepared etc 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 in a democracy then appeasement seems not as disgustingly cowardly as it and pointless as it does sometimes I forgot, um, anti-communism Anti-communism was another reason for appeasement. Germany was seen as a potential ally against the communist USSR and also there was a suspicion that the USSR would have European powers, capitalist powers fight each other and then step into what was left. So we have to understand this anti-communist, anti-Soviet stance that affected a lot of pre-war and post-war politics. The appeasers were rational, reasonable people. Um, they chose appeasement for what they believed to be the correct reasons. Now again with hindsight it's easy to say no it was a ridiculous thing to do. Um, Hitler went on and on and on 
and claimed more land when Sudeten land was given away, when the Czech defences were given away. Um, Hitler just went on to claim the, the whole of Czechoslovakia and it was a disgusting betrayal. Certainly an argument. Um, it can be argued that in 1938 Britain was not prepared for war. There's a counter argument to this to say that Germany wasn't fully prepared and had the Sudeten Czech defences not been not been given away. So if we look on this map here, we can see that the Sudeten defences um, protect Czechoslovakia very well from German attack. And although Czech forces were slightly inferior to the Germans, they might well have been a very valuable ally, rather than just giving them away uh, to the Germans. Then there were some 36 divisions of well-defended Czech troops who would have been British allies in the event of war breaking out in 1938. There's a very strong argument to say that Hitler, sorry, when faced with a difficult task of getting through the Sudeten defences, would not have had the power left to prosecute an effective World War II campaign. So, was it justified? Yes, from a certain standpoint, from a certain point of view. Was it justified? No. Um, Hitler wasn't going to give in, um, just giving way to him gave him more power and for example if um, Britain and France had reacted to Hitler's reoccupation of the Rhineland in 1936, Hitler by his own admission, Hitler by his own admission would have had to turn around and go back to Germany because he didn't have the strength for confrontation. I think that appeasement gave Hitler strength. It helped to make the monster that he became. Other arguments against appeasement were uh, moral, that just to abandon, for example, um, a people like Czechoslovakia was wrong. It was just downright morally wrong. And another one, an ethical kind of, equally ethical, but technical argument, um, thanks chicken, were, was that it was the complete opposite. Appeasement was the opposite of collective security. Which was the, the system preached by the League of Nations whereby everybody took care of each other and that an act of aggression against one was seen as an act of aggression against all. It, it wasn't about doing dirty deals in the corridors of power and selling off countries who were deemed less important than keeping the peace with a man like Hitler. Look, they're the Czech defences and we've just thrown them in the bin. In the 1930s, Britain, against the agreement or against the uh, rules and standards of the League of Nations, adopted a policy known as appeasement. And this policy was against collective security. It was about going out, Britain, on its own, and doing deals with Hitler's Germany to try to keep 
piece. It's it's easy it's easy to argue from let's say a utopian point of view. To say that this is what they should have done, this is what stand Britain should have taken and, and I am somewhat in agreement with this. But there's a certain political and military reality of power games that mean that utopianism, collective security, doing the right thing as we see it is not always the right thing in political Machiavellian terms. You have to understand the politics. I'm being sprayed with water. Um, I, I'm just bit busy blathering away and uh, an old lady's watering the plants and it's just coming straight through the plants and all over me, which is a nice touch. Okay, what I mean by this, for example, Chamberlain, knowing that his people don't want war, uh, not wanting to go through the horrors of a world war again, with some justification, and faced with a situation where he does not want Hitler and Mussolini, for example, to join together. So he does deals privately to try to keep them apart. It might seem wrong, but in reality, what do you do? Do you risk alienating Hitler and making an enemy of him before you're ready? Do you do the same to Mussolini or are you trying, in a harsh diplomatic reality, to do the right thing by your country and that would be to keep Hitler and Mussolini and the Japanese away from each other. Yes, we can argue that they should have done this with fair peace treaties. I'm not defending appeasement, but we need to try to look at both sides if we're going to make an effective argument. I would personally argue that the giving away of uh, Czechoslovakia was a disgrace.